Amen. Now I'd like for you to turn in your Bible to St. John chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 9. Amen. And when you have it, say amen. Amen. Now we're talking about, uh, this is Palm Sunday, and we're talking about uh, Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. And, you, and, and before that happened, a little something had taken place, and, and I'm going to start here uh, at verse 9. And it says, much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests counseled that they might put Lazarus also to death, because they reasoned of him, many of the Jews, because the reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. On the next day, much people that will come to the feast when he had that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it is written, Fear not, daughters of Zion. Behold, that king coming, sitting on an ass coat. These things understood not the disciples at first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered they, the things that was written on him, and that they had done that these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of the grave, and raised him from the dead, being raised. For this cause the people also met him, for they heard that he had done these miracles. You may be seated. A lot of people were there for two reasons. One reason was because Lazarus had gotten raised from the dead. And they wanted to see Lazarus. And another reason, they wanted to see the man that raised Lazarus from the dead. Amen. It comes a time in our life when, 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 when we want to see. Sometimes we just want to see something. Amen. And when, and when Jesus came riding in on the ass, and they, they begin to glorify the young children, they begin to say, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, they were upset with them because they knew that, they knew that uh, Jesus would would have a place that would rank more higher than them. And then it got to a point, they were jealous of Jesus. And they knew that when Jesus had, had raised Lazarus from the dead, something had to be done about this. So they plotted not only to kill Lazarus, but they plotted to kill Jesus. And as Jesus came in, they were, they were, and, and, and so the people were on, they were giving him more accolade than they were giving them. So therefore they had plotted in their heart how they may kill Jesus. But, the people, they were with Jesus, and they understood that who Jesus was, because the revelation knowledge of Jesus came into them, just like he's coming to you. A lot of you, you begin to realize and know who Jesus is. It was a time in your life you didn't know who Jesus was. It was a time in my life I didn't know who Jesus was. But one day I had a vision, and God showed me who he was plainly. And when he showed me who he was plainly, I can't do nothing but magnify him and glorify his name. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When you get to know Jesus, when, when you get to realize and figure out who Jesus is, something begins to come alive in your soul. And, and you're, you're not the same person. The things that you desire change. Things that you used to yearn for, it change. But let me tell you a little secret. See, things that God created us to be praised beings. It's something that's within you, and it, and, and it, 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 it lays dormant, and, 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 and you feel it. We, I feel it with marijuana smoke. I feel it with bacardi. I feel it with THC. I, I, I feel it with cosmic dust. I, I feel it with everything I can do to, to fill that void. But the moment that Jesus came into my life, I said, ah, oh, that's it. That's it, that's what I need. And I, it was just like walking down the street and, and you got a tumor hanging off of you and, 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 and it falls off. Do you go 
go back and pick it up, that put that tumor back up again. No, you don't. Because that's what was hindering you in the first place. So when all of that fell off me, I said, Lord, this is what I needed all the time. Amen. So as they were, as Jesus was coming into town, they were hollering and crying. And, and, and they said, can you shut these people up? Can you stop these people from hollering all of And Jesus said, if, they, if you shut them off, the rocks will cry out. Hey, do you want a rock to cry out for you? Well, stand up and praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't need no rock crying out for me. Thank you, Lord God, for the mercy, Lord God. Thank you for your goodness, Lord God. Thank you for coming for 42 generations and dying for me. Thank you, Lord God, for delivering me off of everything, Lord God, that had me. Thank you, Lord God, for saving my children. Thank you, Lord God, for loving my mama to live 99 glorious years. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a job. Thank you, Lord, for giving me calling me into the ministry, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for goodness and mercy following me all the days of my life, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The only thing I got is thank you on my lips. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you on today. We pray you. We worship you, Lord God. There's none like you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. You gotta praise him, you gotta thank him, you gotta, I mean, it was the story about the ten, the ten lepers, and, 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 and the ten lepers came to Jesus, and Jesus cleansed them all, amen, but only one, only one turned around and said, thank you, amen, and there's gratitude, once you, once you, you got to be grateful, and I call this, this generation of children, they're not grateful, it's, it's, it's what you can do for me generation, and now you can never do enough for them. They always, always want you to do just a little bit more. But you know, ain't no more. I've done all I can do. Ain't no more. Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, he stretched his arms out. He said, it's finished. Amen. There's no more can be added to his word. No more, no more can be added to his word. He said, this is, it is finished. And all the works that he did in the, in, in the scriptures was fulfilled through his whole lifetime. The Bible said, the things that he said and, and, and did cannot be contained. There's not enough paper to write it down. Because in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And everything that was made was made by Him. And not anything that was made was not made. It was made by Jesus. And Jesus said, Lo, I come where? I come in the volume of the book. And Jesus said, I come in the volume of the book. He said, come unto me, all you that labor, and I will give you rest. Rest unto your soul. Lord enough me because I'm low and meek and low at heart. You will find rest into your soul. Sometimes you get tired. You know, what am, what am I tired of? I'm sick and tired of what? You, you're, you're tired in your soul. You're tired in your soul. Your soul is your, your, your conscience, your mind. It's, you know, when you leave away from here, there's two things that want to leave away from here. Your spirit and your soul. And there's a lot of people, you're tired in your soul because your soul is hungry for what? Bible said, man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God must man live. And that bread of life came down through 22 generations, might feel, fulfill our soul. And what happened is that during the period of time he came, he began to speak with, with common men because we saw a video today and, and God had to figure out a way how he could come and he came in the form of man and we can communicate and we can identify with who man is because we're men. But God made man in his own image. But God is a spirit. And we don't know that part of God. Because we don't know our spirit. Our spirit is invisible. But eyes have not seen. Near ears heard. It hasn't even entered into the hearts of man. The things God has prepared for those who love him. Who love him today? Who love him? Do you love him today? Hey, man, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you today, Lord. Well, thank you, Lord God. You know, so therefore, you know, we we, we serve and we come to we come to this to, to the point in time of the year where we call this Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is, is something it wasn't even Palm Sunday wasn't even a Jewish celebrated day. That was a day that was that was pretty much set up by the Romans. You know, but, but the Jews they, they they get a lot of they stop they, they shared a lot of traditions with the Romans at the time. It was a time and also in the scriptures. When it was these two Grecians, they walked up to Jesus and they said, we might see Jesus. 
And when they made that statement, that's when the ball began to roll. You know, Jesus was predestined in the, in the beginning. And there was something that he had to hear. And when he, heard, when he heard a certain thing, he knew it was his time. But when those Grecians say, we must see Jesus. And then from that point on, Jesus knew it was time for him to go back to his father. He said, Lord, glorify me with the glory that I had in the beginning. Before he became, before he became incarnate as God in the flesh, he was the word. He was the word. It was the word, and the word became flesh. And then from that point of time on, it seems like they, they should have had him on. They should have had him. If they really know who Jesus was, they wouldn't have been trying to take the flesh off the word. Because the, the word without flesh is God. The word without flesh is God. The word was flesh is Jesus. So therefore, they begin to try to take the word. They begin to try to take the flesh off the word and the, off of Jesus. And once they turned, took the flesh off of Jesus, they had God to continue with. He said, Pastor Kent, are you telling me Jesus is God? Yes, I am. Jesus is God. As the Bible says in 1 John 5 and 7, there's three that bear work. You reckon in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Amen. Amen. Jesus and God is the same. Amen. We're living in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit right now. Amen. There was a time when we, when we were for the dispensation of, of, of Jehovah. Amen. And then, then there was a time when we were in the, in the dispensation of Jesus. We're still up in the, in the dispensation of Jesus. But Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost comes, he'll come and he'll show you all things. He will not speak of himself. He said, but he'll, he'll speak of all the things I've showed you. And the Holy Ghost will bring things back to your remembrance. And Jesus, as Jesus, and as Jesus prepared everybody for the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost came in Acts chapter 2, verse 20. Amen. He said that when the, when, the, when the day when the Holy you know, they were filled with things and the last days came and the time was full, then the Holy Ghost came. And he said so they were all sitting in 120 in the upper room and the Holy Ghost came and fell upon them. And they began to speak in a different language. And as they began to prophesy, uh, they were in the upper room and everybody began to think, well, these people are drunk. And, and, and Peter said, these people are not drunk as you think. But it's, it's been, this is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. He said, in the last days, God. He said, I'm going to pull my spirit up on all flesh. Your young men should have visions and your old men should dream dreams. And upon my handmaidens and of that day, I will pull upon my spirit. And he said, your sons and your daughters. What does that mean? Not only men, but women. The Holy Ghost has have, have, have been poured out upon men and women. Amen. They said, well, I, a woman can't preach if she, can, if she got a mouth, if she got a voice. The Holy Ghost in her, that neither Jew. A Gentile buying the fruit of the same in Christ. God can fill anybody. If God fills, one pastor told me, he said, Lord, if the Lord filled the monkey up and it, it decided to make him speak, hey, you got to listen to him. God's word is forever settled in heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't want to go into too much longer because I know my bishop got a word. Amen. He, he, <laughs> he kind of sprung it on me this morning. <laughs> I walked in his office. He said, I want you to preach today. <laughs> well, I thank God for today. God said, be you ready. Amen. And I'm going to give the mic right now to Bishop Taylor this time. Praise the Lord, Bishop. And they was flaunting at me. 
Pastor knocked on my door. He walked in, he gave me an iPad. <laughs> and I said, see? See? A lot of times, he don't realize it, but things that I really need in my life, he comes through every time. And he's been there ever since I've known him. I'll never forget one time I was going to see these people. And they were getting on me. They, they, they were taking advantage of me. And somebody knocked on the door. And it was Pastor Tate. <laughs> Came to my rescue. I went through an ordeal in my life that changed my life. That it was one of the most trying times of my life. I asked Pastor Tate to be there with me. And he was there. Nobody's perfect. But like that song, like the song that say, I might not be perfect, but I'm faithful. That's the thing. It's very faithful. He's faithful to the cause. Not only is he a faithful friend, he's a faithful pastor. That's the thing. You know what I do here? I'm going to get into my wisdom.
people of the world who remember that and still hate it to this day. I went to put a new Bible on my phone and when I went to go put the Bible on there, I ran across Jesus Christ Superstar. What a mockery. How people perceive Christ and then they started trying to make an issue out of Mary Magdalene. That must have been Jesus. Secret woman. I've never seen so many ways the world want to slip out of the responsibility of the cross. When Jesus came here, he came here for the purpose of dying. His disciples thought he was coming here to be the next king. But when Jesus came, he came to give his life as a ransom to buy us back. He came to buy you back from the curse. And when he came to lay his life down, he gave himself as a ransom. Then he put before you a choice that you can only make. Only you can make that choice. He said, I said before you this day, life of death. Blessings and curses. He says, choose life and live or choose death and die. How is it that I seem to think to myself that I can live any kind of life and yet the life that Christ went to the cross of Calvary and laid down for me was because he loved me. He wanted me to be saved. As we approach the end time is already upon us. And I'm so sad by the world being in darkness that many don't even see what's about to happen. The Bible said there's multitudes upon multitudes in the valley of decision. They're looking for direction, they're looking for a way of escape. But all the preachers are preaching popularity. How much money can we raise in our church? Some things in life you got to understand is temporal. But the God that we serve is eternal. And if you want to get to the eternal way of glory, you will to have to deny yourself and pick up your cross daily to follow Him. No, it's not going to be popular when they tell you you've got to receive this. It's all right for two men to be married. It's all right for two women to be married. It's all right. It is not all right. It's an abomination to God. You won't see that on the streets paved with gold. You won't see that in heaven. God destroyed nations because of it. And they exist today and it's so desolate in that place that no life will be there. Nothing will grow there. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. And God says now, I'm coming to the nations that will receive me. First when he received me, and then gave me power to become the sons of God. I'm not going to be popular, but if I look at the winner popularity contest, I'm looking to find lost souls that know and want to hear the voice of God. When God's talking again the sound, and he begins to say, come out of her, my people, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive in the name will be called together to meet him in the air. How many of you are born to that great day when Jesus comes back for his bride? Who is his shot? His people? We're the only ones left. But my friends, what friends? Amen. What you call friends are not friends. You don't know a friend until you've been betrayed by one. Until you find people who have knives in your back. Jesus was being betrayed even by his own. They were looking for something to be wrong. When Jesus was getting ready to go down that road, it was a destiny. It was a, a time of preparation. It was a time of purpose. This was the reason why he came. Yeah, yeah. 
They laid, anybody got any problems? They got any problems? I thought we would have a whole lot of problems here. They laid pomegranates. And the little donkey walked on the pomegranates. If you can recall why they walked on the pomegranates, they walked, and as they walked, they walked right there. And the donkey walked on them. And they said, Hosanna, Hosanna, our king is coming. They thought he was going to be the Messiah. But that was not the reason why he came. He came to die that you and I might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. When he died, that's when most people don't quite understand what this day is all about. But you got the hoop, I can hoop, I'm giving the hoop and the holler and the spring. But it ain't about hooping right now, it's about understanding. You need to understand that's why we're here. And the grace that called us into this place to get ourselves to together. Don't miss this moment. It's more than a correct moment that I went to church. I got something out of church when I went. God loved me enough to die for me. He came to set my soul free. He came to give me life and life more abundantly. He came because he loved me. Right now, this is that day that the Lord has made. The Bible says, let us rejoice and be glad in this day. What's the purpose of this day? The purpose of this day is that Christ has come to give us life and life more abundant. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready to live.